what is that service that delivers them food? Is it like know. Uber for like it's home cooked eats. meals? It is Back to our stupid reactions, you idiots. I'm Corbin. I'm hungry. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I'm watching on them. And then we're also on Patreon and follow us on official Twitter account. It's like a thumb war, but with my index fingers. And I win. Today we are doing a movie review. Dun, dun, dun. Because we watched Lunchbox. And the and Lunchbox. The Lunchbox. And if you don't want spoilers, go away. Yes, because that's all that's going to be in here. Yep. Uh, a 2013 film with, uh, obviously, starring Irfan Khan, Nawazuddin and Siddiqui, and you could say this name for me. Uh, Nimrat Khan, who is the... Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Is that... Yeah, she plays... Okay, okay. Uh, okay. okay. Ila. Okay. Okay. okay, just make sure. Yep, yep, yep. And the sonata is... A mistaken delivery in Mumbai's famously efficient lunchbox delivery system connects a young housewife to an older man in the dusk of his life, as they build a fantasy world together through notes in the lunchbox. Good synopsis. Directed oh. by and written screenplay. Ritesh Batra. Uh, who I don't believe we've seen it, we might have. But I just seeing now though, it is produced by Yes, I noticed that in the credits. Uh, uh, by uh Anurag Kashyap. Who uh, obviously gangs of Wasp in uh, as he is Highly uh, renowned, especially by the stupid babies that yes. they, uh, uh, they consider him. Even, we haven't seen a ton of his stuff. We've seen, I don't know if he directed Queen. I don't think he did, but I think he produced it. Uh, right. But we've seen Gangs of Wasp. Yes. He did do some Sacred Games episodes as well. Correct. Uh, so he's, he's a fantastic director. Yes, but this, and this, producer. This, this, this producing producer. thing. And also in notes of credit, there was another, I think Scruvalo was on there as far as a producer involved. Because mm. Scruvalo's name is all over a whole lot of stuff. Gotcha. And I think you may have seen that Irfan exec produced this. Oh, did he? Yeah. He, yeah. he was one of the, there were three executive producers in the credits and I think Irfan was one of them. Yeah, but this film has been highly requested for us to watch Long for time. a while. Yeah. Um, we got but I think the I, DVD. I think it's the last of the Irfan movies that were like at the very top of the list, where it was like Mabul, yeah, and this was way at the top of the yeah, list. Yeah, the Jurassic World. Yes, and, uh, yeah, Jurassic World. <laughs> Life of Pi. Have you even seen Jurassic Irfan Khan? Because that that's the first recollection I ever have of Irfan Khan. Yeah, for me, it's Life of Pi. For Pi, yeah, I've yeah. seen this. And I had seen him prior. He was one of those actors here in the states where I had seen him in enough different things that I rec I wouldn't have given you his name. But when I saw Life of Pi, I thought, oh, and I've seen that guy. We just assumed he was like a an actor. We call him an actor's actor in, in um, Hollywood, which is the industry knows about him, but nobody else does. Yeah. Yeah, there's household names that are great actors that everybody knows here. That is like you have Johnny Depp, and everybody immediately comes to mind. But the actor's actors are the ones that aren't the A-list actors, but, but like industry, Paul Giamatti, yeah. that everybody in the industry knows... Paul Giamatti is one of the best actors we've got alive, but there's probably a whole lot of people here. You say Paul Giamatti, they'd say who? And then you say what movie they're in, they'd go, oh, yeah. okay. He would he wouldn't be a Paul Giamatti though in America. Right. But obviously we had no idea. We do now, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that he was a, a legend. A legend. <laughs> one of the best actors but in, in we're India. Stupid. Yeah. But this film, uh, very short. It's yeah, very, it's an American runtime. Movie. It is. A, it is everything about it lends itself toward Western cinema. I mean, yes. it's runtime. It's 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 everything about it feels like a film. This could easily be made, and you put like Amy Adams and Tom Hanks in the roles. Yes, absolutely. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if I believe I could be totally and utterly wrong. I think this was their official entry to the Oscars. Uh, I don't believe it got in, but uh, I believe it was their official entry. Well, let's talk about what we thought about it. Do you think it would be worthy of being an official entry to the Oscars? Mm -hmm. 100%. Obviously very different from what we're talking about with Golly Boy. 100% different, and I understand why not only it, 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 it didn't get in or it would have won. Yeah. Even though, for me, this is at the top of my list of every film we've seen from India and any film I've ever seen. Yeah. This is an absolute, this isn't the movie, this is a film, and it is an absolutely spectacular, this is one of my favorite films I've ever seen. 
Yeah, this was. <laughs> I, I 100% agree with you, yeah. and, and we could talk about every aspect of and it. And we will. So pull up a chair. I don't know if you want to talk about the acting. Grab or, five or, cups or, of chat. Or the directing. I want to talk about it all. Uh, well, we could talk about the acting first. Let's start with the acting. That's our favorite. Our wheelhouse. Um, let's talk about one of the uh, side characters uh, named Nuwuzadun Sabaki. Yeah, uh, wait. Nawa Sakanika Makanuki? Nawa. We always mispronounce his name. It's really nice to see this guy because I think this guy's probably going to go really far. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we've ever seen him in anything. Uh, man! I Because... This, my wife watches this with me, she, like, once again, she watches most stuff, um, and she, uh, I, I told her, I was like, so, you, this is Earfun Con, she's seen Earfun and know the stuff. And right, was this her first exposure to Nawazuddin? It was. Okay. And so I was like, so it has Nawaz, he's probably one of the best actors ever, ever. uh, in my opinion, and she's like, oh yeah, he's sweet, and I'm like, you know, it's funny. <laughs> this is, this is so, so not for his characters. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why it was so impressive to me. Of course. He, he did something that little actors have ever done to me uh, in no almost makeup, almost like a Danny Day Lewis. He almost made his his bones fall yes. differently on his skin exactly. than anything else I've seen him in. 100%. Because I didn't recognize this man. No. <laughs> he didn't have any makeup on, and I was like, who the hell are you? <laughs> no, if you watch, I mean, if you watch this and you watch Sacred Games, just as a, as a juxtaposition, uh, the entirety... He's, that's a great comparison. Uh, I don't know that I, there ever has been or ever will be, it's possible, but for me, I don't know if there'll ever be a shapeshifter that freaks me out as much as, as Daniel Day-Lewis. But he has the capacity, because he's so in touch with what he's portraying, that his very being sh sh alters. Yeah. It really does, his very being. You can see you can see the essence of this guy in the lunchbox, and then when you see the essence of Gaitande, mm -hmm. these are completely different human beings. Mm -hmm. And he is, this guy, India, Nawazuddin Siddiqui, is one of the greatest actors we've ever seen. Oh, 100%. I don't care where they're coming from. England, America, India. Uh, and Irfan uh -huh. is what he, if he's as effortless, as anybody I've ever seen, and I don't don't know if I've ever seen anybody be so effort. Maybe Michael Caine. You know who is, he has an effortlessness that reminds me. It's very very different, and I refer to for Sir Anthony Hopkins all the time. And mm -hmm. the fact yeah. that uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins just is just so just there, and this movie is so perfectly fitting for Irfan. Uh, so let's just stick to the acting aspect of it as well. Yeah, I I just think I can't say enough about Nawazuddin Siddiqui, Irfan, and then right up there, the the simplicity of what Nimrat Kaur provided. I don't think we, we saw her probably in the trailer for Airlift. I don't know if we've ever seen her in anything else. You can let me know. But she was perfect. Perfect in this perfect. role. Hundred percent perfect. You felt for her. Yep. Uh, well, Hundred percent believable. You, 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 right from the start, because uh, you, you see that she's, she's really trying to rekindle her marriage and trying to, you know, do everything she can to basically save it. Mm -hmm. Basically. Yeah. And then uh, to, even though it wasn't. Husband does a lot of stuff wrong, but even though it wasn't his fault that he didn't get it, she was so heartbroken that she put in so much effort and she didn't reciprocate anything. And then she found out obviously why. Mm -hmm. And then obviously he became a, uh, a total dick. But <laughs> yeah, he, um, he, he for me he was from the get go. Yeah, I did, and that was great. Well done to him as well. The actor who portrayed that guy, yeah, hundred uh, percent, had very little screen time and very little to do, but he had a really really important role to play in the storytelling. Um, and he could have easily been the stereotypical, you know, ass that you just dislike. Uh, but yeah, from the get go, I really didn't like him. Her, her work, like everybody else's work, and we'll get into the directing and the writing because it's, it's, um, the writing and the directing gave them, I mean, if I was Irfan and I had seen this script, I too would want to exec produce it. Oh yeah. And be in it. I mean, so we'll get into that. We can talk about the director, uh, say his name again? Uh, Ritesh Batra. Uh, okay, yeah. The way he made this film was just genius in so many different aspects from the beginning, from 
from the side character of Auntie never being on screen. This would make a great play. Yeah. N never. Boy, would this make a great play. Never ever having screen time. It's just you know her personality through her, her through her voice, which is brilliant in in a, in a tactic that's not used often in film. Auntie. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All we know about her was the voice in the basket that came down every once yeah. in a while, and the fact that she's a, you know very protective, and then the whole the whole the way he directed it with them um, writing the letters back and forth, and then almost like the the point it was a great small point where she was talking about her uncle and the fan stopping, and then he looked up and his fan was stopping, but that. everything else was going, and then it went right back up. Yeah, the the synchronicity of their lives. Yeah, there's so many this this movie as a whole is one of the most um, beautifully human films I've ever seen in my life with the most delicate, intelligent nuances of filmmaking mm -hmm. that, like Sacred Games, one of our favorite things about Sacred Games was how they assume the intelligence of their audience. Mm -hmm. And this director in both his screenwriting as well as his, his filming assumes our intelligence and assumes that our cinematic appetite is is ready to be given at a high level of artistic merit mm -hmm. and that like juice mm -hmm. like the short film juice uh so I my fa that. i love my probably for me the thing in this movie that epitomizes the entirety of the film for me in terms of its subtlety its humanness and its absolute brilliance in direction and writing is the moment when she's going through the hamper mm -hmm. and she's smelling the clothes. Yeah. And you can tell at first what she's smelling is giving her a sense of hope and happiness because she's smelling her husband. And all she does is pick up some clothing and then she goes to put it in and she stops for a moment and you recognize something doesn't smell the same. And the moment she did it, I out loud said, oh no. Mm -hmm. And she smelled it again and she looks at it and then she smells it again. And you know, as she's doing it, she's smelling a woman. Mm -hmm. And that- I, I figured that, I figured that was coming. I did figure it was coming, but what I love is how, uh, no one said a word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we didn't. We didn't you need to have it. an explanation. We didn't. As an audience, it. you're you're intelligent enough to realize what's going on. It's a very human experience. Very that human experience before. that you've seen it, and nothing needed to be said. And let me tell you something. Her beautiful work. Do you know mm -hmm. how many other actors would take that moment and, do and something. tell us what is happening, versus just not being concerned about whether it's told, just be. Yeah. 100%. And it was it was as perfect as as this film is about as perfect for me as film can become in terms of its screenwriting can we just talk about how i want to talk about the simplicity yeah. of the, the the cinematography yeah 100 percent. and the simplicity of the score mm -hmm. how it was all it was all very simple but beautifully static, simple static so many static shots mm -hmm. was this shot in two weeks Probably. Seriously. It might have been. This could have been shot in two weeks. Uh, but it was a, a, I liked the, the simplicity of their relationship mm -hmm. and the fact that it wasn't started, it was, it was started by accident, obviously. Yeah. But then it was very, there was no romantic intentions for a long time. No, there weren't, or, the romantic intentions came after they realized the romance had started. Yeah. Uh, and so it wasn't like either of them were setting out to mm -hmm. find something or anything like that. He yeah. was just enjoying the food and he said it was a little salty today. <laughs> <Which> was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I laughed out loud. It was so funny. <laughs> just, it's a little salty today. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> and then, uh, so obviously they, they, the, they realized that they needed each other and that they, they enjoyed having the company because he was a, a loner after his wife died he kind of just kept to himself and he not was... just a loner he was becoming Ebenezer Scrooge yeah he was becoming a very dark empty man mm -hmm. understandably no, no judgment on that no I mean I can't, can't imagine and a lot of people and they go there she wanted to just talk to somebody about 
she, yeah, heard about what, what was going on in her life. Exactly. And she, yeah. <laughs> and it became like, without knowing each other, became concubines. And I thought another beautiful uh, moment was um, when he to when he didn't show up, but then he told her what, what happened. That killed me. Like the fact that one, he, I knew what was happening. The moment it was, it started, I was like, he's, he's feeling old right now. He, yeah. he got the beard and then somebody looked in the mirror. He, some, somebody told somebody me offered here on the, you want to see it? Sit. And then so I was like, I know exactly what's going But then when he said, I, I went and then I just sat and there I and you. I watched you wait for me. I was like, that's, that's brilliant. That, that, that really, yeah. Really when I was really watching, I was like, Rick's going to cry. Oh, I cried, baby. I've got, <laughs> <laughs> I've got emotion right now when he wrote that to her and he, he well, she sends him back empty, nothing in it. <laughs> I love Which was great. It was great. Which was great. So great. Uh, and he replies back and he says, he, he writes back, there was nothing in the lunchbox. I deserved that. And she's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And then when he describes what happened when, and he, he gives her enough information to prove I was there, like how much water you drank. Mm -hmm. And... His um, talk about the guys in love with her because to do that, to see her and recognize, I mean, his selfishness, if he didn't have a good heart and his selfishness, it could have been, ah, she makes beautiful food that absolutely enraptures my heart. She's a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. She's obviously going to be in a marriage that's, that's dead and mm -hmm. this, she's not going to stay with this guy. And she's clearly become connected with me. So all of those signs point to, my goodness, I could have a fresh new start in life, but because of his insecurities, and also I think because in, underneath it all, this is a kind man, he's thinking about all of the pitfalls and things that maybe would be bad for her, mm -hmm. and puts himself in that place. And it, it, it hurt me because I wanted him to not go there, Yeah. but it was so touching that he was that caring toward her. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I just, it was, I couldn't, I can't say enough about this film. It's like, there's no, there's no flaws in this film there. Yeah. I can't really think of a flaw. There was no acting flaw. No, it, it is. There was no writing flaw. There it's was, for me. It's my favorite film we've seen so far is, is header mm -hmm. that, that for me takes something in a way that just astonished me from what is arguably for most, for many people, but for me, the single greatest contribution to the world of theater whether it's stage or film, is, is Shakespeare's Hamlet. So what was done with that was mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. No other film for me hit second place in a stronger sense than this movie. This, this, the Lunchbox is one of the best movies I've ever seen. And it was nominated for a BAFTA as well. Um, yeah, it is. But you, if we could talk about the ending. And I, I really want to. I would like to uh, know what, what you thought was what, what happened. Because, oh, this is... You loved oh, this ending. I loved it. When it ended, my first, I had two thoughts that happened simultaneously. I loved it. My first, ed, my first thought was, Corbin's happy. Yeah. <laughs> I was very happy. Corbin's very, very happy. I was like, thank you! Yeah. I, it's, like, <laughs> it's like Sacred Games, if you yeah. watch Sacred Games. And it might surprise you to know that I'm more happy than not with this ending. I'm more happy than not. What do you think was, what happened? What do you think happened? Well, what do you think I think happened? Go ahead. Corbin, what, do you, um, what do you think happened? I, I, I believe <laughs> I'm a romantic at heart. Uh -huh. And I believe in the power of, I believe in true love. I believe in people digging down and finding their best selves and overcoming the odds. In most circumstances, not all, in most circumstances, I think what happens in the end of this is they go their separate ways and nothing else ever happens. But the romantic in me and the person who believes that you actually can dig down and go for the thing that you want and not settle and get past your fears and push for the thing that... Because I think deep down, both of them want this and want each other. It's why he... That moment, this is part of the ending, the genius of the moment where he's on the train with the old man. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we get as powerfully subtle as the laundry moment is him talking to the man and the man saying, I just retired a couple of years ago. And he looks down at that old hand tapping on the table and he gets the realization. I'm not as old as I think I am. That man's retiring. I'm retiring. 
Am I settling? Am I giving up? I am. That's why he goes back. And because he does that, and he's clearly on the streets asking questions, he's looking for her. Well, did you did you catch the? Um... <laughs> God bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, did you catch where he was going in the end? They gave you a hint to where she was going. No, where he was going. Obviously, you assumed where he was going, but they gave you a pretty big what hint. What was the big hint? The train he was on? At the end, when it ended, right. he was on a train and there were people singing. They right. had that before and it was the people that were going to get the lunches. Right. It was the exact same people singing that song, going to get the lunch. So he was following the lunch right. to get to her house. But here's what I think happened. <laughs> so I think, I think... He finds her and they live happily ever after. I don't. I know. Uh, I, know. <laughs> I think this is what happens. I think he goes to get her, but she has already She's left. Gone. Right. And they cross paths never to uh, see each other ever again. So, like, they're both, they're both, she's going to find him mm -hmm. and he's going to find her, but they cross paths at the wrong moment. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think. That's what I think happened. I think the moment on the train when he came to the realization of I'm not going to settle. I don't think that man's stopping till he finds her, and uh, he really shouldn't. So it ends. It ends with them together because he won't let it be anything else. I think he came to the, the realization of, I'm not going to settle. I'm not giving up. I the re the reason he doesn't go and retire and leave is because of her. Oh, I, I agree with that, yeah. but I don't think they find each other. I do. <laughs> and now, <laughs> <That's the cynic. laughs> how can we talk about some of the other subtle beauties that are part of the screenwriting and the cinematography and the directing mm -hmm. and the score? Also, I'm very glad she left her husband because often I've found in Indian cinema, not all the time, but there's times where people try to work stuff out with people that I don't think they should work stuff Correct. out with. Correct, or worse, worse um, they, they settle for abusive ugliness Lovelessness. And I'm not saying that only happens in India. That happens. No, and there are you know there are times where you can have a, a, a but, an awful marriage that people realize and restore what they yeah, had. But when two but people that guy, are clearly unhappy in a relationship, and they are both clearly unhappy in a relationship, uh, I believe they should go their separate ways. The, uh, the, the moment, the, especially for the kid. The moment. Don't this, do it to the kid. This hurts so bad. The moment she's talking to him, and he won't even freaking look at her, and she's she's trying to touch him. Mm -hmm. And, and she's trying to take the advice of Irfan when he said, maybe you should have another child because sometimes child can help, which that's don't, not good don't advice, listen guys. To that advice, please. If your marriage is struggling, having another child isn't going to make the marriage better. <laughs> that's, that's guys. <laughs> but right when that happened, me and my wife were like, no, not, no. A, not a good decision. But she's standing there and she's trying so hard. She touches him and he's just being a prick. And she says something about wanting to have another baby, and he's just, even when he walks past her, it's like this weird, awkward, Well, it's probably because he had sex that day. Exactly. My heart just broke for her. I really wanted Irfan to come in and just have a silencer on his gun and go, Come with me, my lady! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but again, the, the, the beauty getting now to another element. The beautiful, the, the character that Nawazuddin plays, this beautiful mm. man. This beautiful guy who, I love the moment when he finally isn't going to take Irfan's crap anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and he's at the thing, he says, fine, I'm going to go do the work myself and you don't have to do anything. And Irfan goes, wait. And he the, changed his body. He I changed know. his voice. He's beautiful. He changed his face. He's a beautiful actor. I absolutely, we absolutely This would have been a performance like Ranbir's and Gully Boy that if this was the first thing we'd seen him in, we would be like, yeah, he was yeah, good. He was very good. But you don't realize how how much of a stretch this is for him. Yeah. His natural, I think, way to want to act is sinister, evil. Yeah. Though that's I it, bet that's his wheelhouse. That's, I bet that's Nawazuddin's that's, favorite I, kind of part. That's how I'm comfortable as an actor. Right. I prefer you don't to have play a villain. Yeah, all actors have favorite kinds of roles they like to play. Yeah, and so, like, to go out on a stretch and something, I know it's, I mean, I'm sure he's comfortable with everything, of course, but something that is not in his normal wheelhouse. And holding his own in, this is this is as his career is beginning. Yeah. He's holding his own with Irfan Khan. Yeah. On, in every frame of film. Yeah. But the storyline and the beauty of like when he, 
I knew, again, the subtlety of assuming our intelligence when they're having dinner at his house. He finally goes to have dinner. And Irfan says, so how long have you been married? And when Nawazuddin says, sometimes it feels like this, sometimes it feels like this, you know immediately. They're not married. Mm -hmm. And he's a little ashamed to admit it because that's a shameful it cultural... It was such a sad moment at his wedding. <laughs> well, even when they're out on the, the patio and he says, you asked me how long we were married, we're not. Mm -hmm. And then when he says... Would you come and be a witness? Mm -hmm. Because in an Indian marriage, I've been told, is you need to have a witness from the family, or it's not a legal marriage. You, they actually have to be witnesses. That you can't just go and two people go get married. Oh. There have to be witnesses from the family. That's why the family can have some power over the marriage taking place. I don't like that. Really? You really don't think the marriage should be up to the couple <laughs> alone? <laughs> Uh, that's what I think, yes. Oh, <laughs> me too! Uh, Whatever. But, but, obviously you want the families to be happy oh, yeah, and involved. Right. But, yeah, the two, the juxtapositions, if you take that scene on the on the, the porch, the patio, when he's talking to him and he asks Irfan, he's like, I'm an orphan, she has a big family, there'll be no one on my side. Mm -hmm. Would you come? And then... The picture. <sighs> that picture. It and it helped. It widened. I know. They widened the shot to show oh. you... And there's, there is precious, and it's helped so much that Nawazuddin is short of stature. Mm -hmm. Precious little Nawazuddin in his garb. Just when have we there. ever said that about exactly. a performance? Precious little Nawazuddin. Oh, precious little <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> That's the brilliance of the man. Oh, man. This dangerous powerhouse of a man is just this precious little guy with earphone next to him. And you can see the awkwardness that they've got. But he's still happy to be there with his girl. Mm -hmm. And this, this, if this movie, okay, guys, we're going to make a comparison. At least I am right now about how if this were done here in, in America, the attention it would be given. And the reason I'm making this comparison is because we want the films we see in India to be given the kind of attention in America they deserve. Okay, if this was a film that had, I've used this example, if Tom Hanks played Irfan's role and Amy Adams played her role. And then you had somebody like a, who would you put in Nawazuddin's role that would be a name actor that everybody knows here in America? I, I would love to see Shia, honestly. Yeah, let's put Shia LaBeouf, right? Yeah. Doing a totally different spin. Yeah. Being this meek, sweet, because he could do that. Yeah, Shia's. He, oh, he could do that. But not, yeah, and Shia LaBeouf in Nawazuddin's role, right? Yeah. This movie would be released in November. And it would be nominated for Best Picture, yeah. Best Screenplay, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, and Best Supporting Actress. And everyone would be talking about how this is the little movie that could possibly win the big award for Best Picture and sweep all of the and awards. That's an American film. And they would get the SAG Awards, the Globes. It would be in all three of the big award ceremonies. Honestly. Everyone would be talking about this movie for it, months. It could also be done if you did it with the same cast, just do it in English. Yeah, and here's... Agreed. But here's the deal. And Irfan would win. You know. I yearn for the day. Someone sent me this message the other day and said, do you think that... Um, also, this doesn't change our opinion on Gully Boy. We still think that's a perfect choice. It is a perfect Oscar. choice. Because and yeah, this wasn't chosen as the nomination. And there's a reason. For specific reason we think For Gully those Boy. specific anyway, reasons. But anyway, yeah, for those specific reasons. Uh, I This... This is the kind of movie, this would be a movie, remember we talked about when we're talking to people here in America that don't know Indian cinema. Oh yeah. What are the movies you'd want them to see first and yeah, foremost? You this I would immediately well, say, watch, uh, I would, this would be very if, early. If they like cinema. They have to like cinema. They have to be a, they have to be somebody who not likes Not somebody who just film. likes action, of course. No, 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 no. no. If, if they like movies, that's not it. They have to like film. <laughs> They have to be an aficionado. Yes. And... Uh, 100%. They could be, it's easily digestible. And I don't... For I, that's the thing. I don't want this remade with Tom Hanks and Amy Adams, and I don't want it remade in English. If they can... All I want Americans to watch this the way it was freaking made and love it for what it is. Well, sadly, Americans don't change. Yeah, well... <laughs> I still have... I still have hope that I we can be agents of change. Well, I change think, this country one person at a time. I think it was a beautiful film. I'm very glad we finally got to watch it. Yeah. Um, let us know what, uh, what what. I just had a thought about why we why we think and understand why this. I mean, if you're talking about its Oscar capabilities, this is a more Oscar worthy film than Gully Boy. hundred percent. hundred percent. But Gully Boy is more likely to win. Well, no, than Lunchbox would. 
I think Gully Boy is more likely to get the nomination. Well, I think I that, think Gully Boy is more likely to get farther in than this, even though this is a more Oscar worthy film. And you agree? Yes. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, but the reason I we said about Gully Boy is that uh, there's a ton of factors. Exactly. It's mm, yeah. Anyways, but there's a lot more people, especially even in India, that will be rooting for Gully Boy than would be rooting and and watching for Gully Boy than would be rooting and watching for Lunchbox. Sad because of. This who's in it, right? And all that kind of stuff. So all those right. factors went into our Gully Boy thing, right? Uh, we still think it's a brilliant film, but yeah, anyway, and we're, we're, not, we're not on that. No, 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 no. Exactly. I was just, but we had brought it up. Uh, brilliant film, one of our that favorites, I believe. Um, but uh, let us know what we should watch and review next. Oh, and I forgot one other thing. Oh god, the score. Yeah, it's brilliant. I think you already talked about that. It's so simple, and there was basically no score. Yeah, the majority of this film was scoreless. There was no score except Auntie. She was the score. Yeah, she was. This would be a great play. It was an endearing. When they say auntie, it's so endearing. It is. At least to me, because it's so foreign. Well, to me. so as auntie is, and when I hear Dee Dee, and I don't know if it's actually their auntie or if it's just they call everybody auntie. You know. I think uh, yeah. I think she actually was her, she was auntie, her auntie. But yeah, everybody's either auntie, uncle, sister, brother. Yeah. 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 So, so. it's such an endearing kind of like the Indian head knot. Auntie. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Very much. How do you know? Who's calling whose auntie if everybody calls everybody? <laughs> that's true. what I want to know. It's true. <laughs> also, what is this service? Why? It exists, apparently. That's crazy. It exists. I thought that as well. I was like, why doesn't your friend just make his lunch? That would cost so much <laughs> I know. Why doesn't your friend just make his lunch and bring yeah. it? But I think it's because I think it's because the work ethic, the amount of hours that people put in, that that's a very beneficial thing. If you don't have to think about making your lunch and you can just go and do your work because they spend so much time at work, mm. that's what makes it such a viable no, viable service. Well, let us know what you should watch and review next, and let us know what you thought about the film. I don't know what he just said.